Good morning or afternoon, everyone. My name is Mariela Salinas, and I'm a marketing specialist here at Educate 360. Welcome to today's webinar, Creating and Sharing Dashboards in Power BI, presented by our expert instructor, Ed McRae. We are using Zoom for today's session, and we will be sharing a copy of this recording with you in an email after the webinar. We do encourage participation throughout the webinar, so please use the chat or the Q&A option for our short Q&A portion after the presentation. Educate360 is so excited to present this webinar today. I will now hand it over to you, Ed. All right. Hello, hello, everyone. And again, welcome to our webinar. I am Ed McCray, and we are going to discuss creating and sharing of dashboards in Power BI. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. What are dashboards specifically in Power BI? Um, dashboards are interactive visualizations of data that provide a consolidated view of key metrics and trends. Creating a dashboard involves importing data from various sources, transforming and modeling the data, and then designing visualizations to convey insights. Dashboards can be shared with stakeholders through the Power BI service, allowing for collaboration and real-time data sharing. So dashboards are really an end goal. You can't jump right into Power BI from the get-go and just start creating dashboards. There are certain things that have to be in place before you can create a dashboard, and the, creation, the actual physical creation of the dashboard is really the most simple part of the entire process. Um, now, in order to understand the process, we need to know that there are three different platforms that Power BI exists in. Uh, one, and you saw this mentioned in the previous slide, is the Power BI web service. This is how we access Power BI through Office 365, and I'll show you guys this uh, in a little while. Um, so you have the web service. You also have Power BI desktop, which I'm going to be showing you as well. And um, then you also have the Power BI mobile service. Now, in order to create a dashboard, you are going to need to utilize both the desktop service. Oops, sorry about that. You're going to need to utilize both the desktop service and the web service. Let's get back to our slide here. Don't know what just happened there. Things have a mind of their own. All right, here we are. We're going to need to use at least both the desktop service and the web service if we are going to really take full advantage of using Power BI. Uh, now, Let's take a look here at the different objects that are created within the various components that I just mentioned. Power BI Desktop is used specifically for the creation of data sets. All right. So the data set, this is where we spoke about importing and then transforming of data. This is the forming of a data set or a data model. And we're going to use Power BI Desktop to do that. Then, before we can have a dashboard, we need to have reports. Reports are the tools where visualizations are created, and these can be created inside of both the desktop and the web service. And then lastly, we have the actual creation of our dashboard, which is us taking pre-made, pre-existing visualizations from various reports and displaying them together in one space. And this is going to be done exclusively in the web service okay so we can see how both of those components come into play when we come to creating a dashboard so the way that this works is again we connect to our data we transform and combine our data this is most commonly going to be done using power bi desktop these two things at some point we are going to publish our data to the web service and that is where we can begin to manipulate our reports further. Now, reporting can be done in the desktop service, uh, desktop as well. Uh, but ultimately, we're going to publish our data so that we can create dashboards and begin to get different insights and do different things with our data. Okay. All right. So all that being said, let me show you the end game first, and then we will step backwards and actually create um, a new dashboard. I have a uh, Power BI web service or the Power BI web service pulled up. Here you can see I have various reports. 
And this is my dashboard. This dashboard contains visualizations from several different reports, right? And we can see all of these right here. So this is our end game. This is what we want to be able to get to. In order to get to this, we are going to need to start from here. This is Power BI Desktop. And uh, this is downloadable via the web service or sometimes your organization might have a different portal that you can go through to download and install Power BI Desktop. But this is where things start. So the first thing I need to do is I need to pull some data into my Power BI Desktop to begin to create a data model. So let's go ahead and do that. I can import data from a large variety of sources. I'm gonna pull in some data from an Excel workbook. So I'm gonna choose Excel workbook here. And let's go ahead and grab some data. And uh, we'll just grab this data that's right here from this workbook. It's connecting to it and it's going to show us the different worksheets or tables that are available inside of the workbook. So I have two tables here. I have a listing of products and I have a listing of sales orders. Okay. I'm gonna import both of these. Now, when I go to do my import, I have two options of things I can do. I could just load the data directly into my data model, or I can transform that data. Transforming the data is going to take me into Power Query and let me clean the data up, change the data, create calculations if I want to do so. So let's actually do that. I'm going to go ahead and transform this data. This is gonna load up Power Query for me. If you've used Power Query inside of Excel, it's the exact same. Let's pull it up on my other screen. So let's just drag this on over here. If you've used Power Query before in Excel or in the Dataverse, there we are, it's the exact same Power Query. All right, let's refresh this. I don't know why it's saying the data might be old because it's not. All right, so I can use this to begin to manipulate my data a little bit. And I think that I would like to clean up a couple of things about this data. Nothing really major in here. One thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this ID column that's hanging out over here. I don't really need that. Uh, the other thing that I think that I want to do is I would like to create a calculation that is going to give me the days that it took to ship this particular item. So I'm going to subtract the order date from the ship date and see what we get, all right? Um, so here we go. So I'm gonna click ID. I'm gonna just go ahead and remove that column. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in a column. There are lots of other things that we can do in here. In the interest of time, I'm not going to get deep into, you know, cleaning up and transforming data, but I could load up another data set uh, that has a lot more stuff that needs to be done. Maybe we'll do that in another webinar. Uh, so let's do our ship date minus our order date. And it's telling me no errors. This is good. I'm going to click OK. Let's go ahead and change this into a whole number. All right, cool. Um, while I'm here, I think I'd like to add in another source, right? So maybe, you know, I've imported, um, I have this data selected, but I want to pull in some data from a different source. So I'm going to say new source. I'm going to grab a text slash CSV file. And look at that. I've got that sitting right here for me. Let's go ahead and pull that into our query as well. And there we are, right? This is all, all good. No need to change anything there. Let's click OK. And it adds that in here like so. I'm going to change the name of this right away to customers. Beautiful, right? So we can start pulling in data from multiple sources at once and then just do one big old import if that's what we wanted to do, all right? Um, so like I said, if we look around in here at your leisure, there are a bunch of other things we can do to clean up our data. I'm going to go ahead and hit close and apply. 
and it is going to close Power Query. It's going to go ahead and perform the actions, whatever the actions were that I set on my data. It's going to perform those at this time, and it's going to then import that data into my data model. We see it doing that right now. Once it imports into the data model, one of the cool things that Power BI Desktop does for us automatically is it looks for and tries to establish relationships between the different sets of data, right? So we can manually do this, and sometimes you might have to, but it tries to do some of the work for us. Um, and we need to have relationships in place in order to start building visualizations based on the different sets of data that we might have, all right? So here we are. We can see it there. It said detecting relationships. I don't know if you guys caught that because uh, it did it very quickly. But here we go. Our data is coming in and it's going to show up like so in my field list. We can take a look, see my customer fields, my products fields, and my sales order fields. There we go. All right, this is fantastic. So I can view the data here. I'm in my report view currently, which is where I'm going to build some visualizations in a moment. I can switch to my table view. This is where I can actually see the data itself. All right, so we can see our data. Um, I can also begin to make some changes to the data. So I can come in here, for example, and I can start changing the format. Let's change these to some short date formats real quick. And then let's also change uh, some of this financial data over here to be a currency format. It's important to do that before we start building visualizations. I mean, you can go back and adjust it later as well uh, once you're in a visualization, but however the data is formatted here is how it will begin to appear inside of your visualizations. So let's just get our decimal places together here and get all of this stuff formatted. And then I'm gonna show you that there are relationships that are already created between these different sets of data. And then I'm going to show you how to create some visualizations, okay? There are different things that it's automatically going to do. Similar to a pivot table, you'll notice that some of these fields, like all these numerical fields over here, have this auto sum symbol next to them. And that is because it's going to automatically do a calculation uh, we see here summarization where I could choose the default calculation. It will do a sum by default for any numerical field. And, um, you know, the other fields it's not going to calculate anything for. Okay. All right, so I've got this formatted the way I want. This is cool. Uh, let's go down to relationship view, and we can see that it has already created relationships between these tables. We won't get deep into that right now, but suffice it to know that these are correct, and this is important if I want to have visualizations based on fields from multiple tables. Okay. All right, this is marvelous. So I have my uh, data model created, right? It's cleaned up, everything is related, all this is good. Now I'm going to go ahead and create some visualizations. Now this time if I wanted to, I could publish it to the web service and do my reporting there, but I'm gonna do that right in here, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start dropping in some things. Uh, let's drop in a uh, stacked bar chart. And let's take a look at the shipments per subcategory. So I'm going to drop in a subcategory here. And let's look at the shipments. And let's break it down per region. moving a little slow today but it's going to pop up in a moment uh let's go ahead and break this down per there we go let's break it down per region in our legend fantastic it's this sales table that's moving a little sluggishly it's all right it'll come along um so we've got that going on here let's just drop a couple of other visualizations in here real quick uh let's drop in a table and inside of our table, let's look at the categories. Let's look at the subcategories. Let's look at the product names. And then let's look at the sales. Right, we can see it building those things out right over here. Again, the sales table is taking a little long to load for some reason, but that is working for me. And there we go. 
let's drop in a combo chart. We'll do a line and clustered column chart here. And let's look at the difference between sales and profit. So we'll put sales in our column y-axis. We will put profit in our line y-axis. And we will break this down per month. So let's expand the order date. Get down here to the, uh, maybe we'll look at years. Let's put years in the x-axis. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, sales and profit per year. Um, all right, that's cool. Maybe we'll look at that per category too. Huh? Throw a little legend in there. Yeah, that looks nice. I like that. We are trending upward. This is what we want. All right, let's drop one more visualization in here. Just because I want to. Uh, let's do a funnel. And let's take a look at the shipments per region. Matter of fact, let's look at the shipping cost per region. Kind of see what's happening there. We got some blanks showing up somewhere in here, so I'm going to filter that out. All right, get rid of our blanks. All right, this is cool. All right, so we got this working here for us. Now, of course, we can start adding other things in. Just for good measure, let's add in a slicer. And let's use our slicer here uh, to filter this information per, uh, per customer. And let's have that show up for us as a dropdown. Okay. And then let's do one more slicer, just because I want to. And let's do a slice per country. Well, it looks like we only got one country in here. All right, so let's do it per region. Well, custom, yeah, let's do it per customer region. And uh, let's have this show up as a tile I like that yeah this is good all right so I have my report here this is wonderful let's go ahead and save this now of course I could click on any of these things and it's going to begin to filter all of this data based on the region right and or the customer that I have selected there's tons of things that we could do in here in regards to uh, formatting all these visualizations and all of that, we could get things looking exactly the way we want them to look. I am going to forego that for this time, though. So let's go ahead and save this. We could also add multiple pages into our uh, report, by the way. Let's go ahead and find a good place to save this at. And then we are going to publish this. to our web browser. I'll we'll put this in here. We'll call this uh, regional sales model. All right, we're going to publish this now. Once this finishes saving, we'll see the name pop up up here. We're going to publish this to our Power BI web service so that we can actually utilize this okay. and create a dashboard. Now, of course, in order to do this, we need to be signed in to our account uh, that we want to connect to. So I already am signed in here. I'm going to click publish. When I click publish, it is going to ask me what workspace I want to publish this information to. So we always will have our personal workspace, but then in your organization, you might have other team based workspaces that you want to publish the data to and we'd see those show up here. I'm going to publish this to my workspace. Select. It is going to go on ahead and publish for me. Isn't this wonderful? Should give me a message here in a moment. There we go. Let's me know this was successful. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and jump back over to our web service. 
And let's take a look at our workspace here. No time for feedback, Microsoft. And there it is. We can see that our regional sales model that I just published is showing up in here. Let's go on ahead and uh, let's take a look at the report. And I'm going to show you how to now create a dashboard. All right, so here we have our information here, like so, inside of our report. If I hover over any of these visualizations, I am going to see a little thumbtack. And if I click on the thumbtack, it is going to give me the option to pin this to a dashboard. I can pin it to an existing dashboard. So I already have my sales dash. I don't think I want to add anything else to that. So I'm going to pin this to a new dashboard. And let's call this um, regional data. Regional data dash. All right. Say that 10 times fast. So I'm going to pin this to this new dashboard. Pin. All right, it's gonna to go to that dashboard. Now, I'm gonna add a couple of other things to my dashboard. Now, you're gonna notice that my slicers, it will not let me pin those to a dashboard, right, because those are specific to a report. Let's go ahead and pin this to that regional dashboard. And let's go take a look at another report here real quick, and maybe we'll add something else to that same dashboard. Let's take a look at this report here. That's the same report we just looked at. I don't wanna look at that. Uh, let's look at this guy right here actually is what I meant to go to. We'll grab another item or two. Let's grab this map. Let's pin that to our regional data dash. And uh, let's grab this sales cost and profit thingamajigger. And we'll move that there as well. Beautiful. All right, let's go to that dashboard now. And here is our dashboard. All right, so this is great. These should pop up in a moment. I'm not sure why they're not displaying anything yet. Let's see, it is taking me back to the report. So those should appear momentarily. Uh, but these are loaded up just fine. But what I can do is I can start, there we go. I can start dragging stuff around. So I can move these. Let's say I wanted to have a, you know, my map start things off. And then I wanted to have this guy stretched out over here a little bit. And then I wanted to have it kind of set up this way, right? Very good. There's my dashboard. Nice and easy. So as you can see, like I said, the actual physical creation of the dashboard is the easiest part in the process, all right? Uh, it's the setting up of our data and all those other things that is going to take more time. Now, if I were to come over here in my dashboard in the upper right-hand corner, let's take a look at our, that's actually not where I wanted to go there. Um, I can go in and start changing some settings here. There we go, let's go to edit. That's what I was looking for. And let's just change the dashboard theme real quick. I could, if I had like a manually JSON created theme, I could upload that. Uh, let's just switch this to a dark theme if I wanted to, or there's a colorblind friendly theme, right? or I could do something custom here, or I could manually change the background, right? And get this looking the way that I want. So if you have like specific branding, I might change the tile colors. Right, so if you had like specific branding within your organization that you needed to use or anything like that, you could absolutely do that. Change the opacity. Right, so that's cool. One of the cool things you can do in a dashboard is use insights right up here. You can ask your dashboard questions. So I can click in this Q&A area here, which you're about to get a chance to ask questions in a moment as well. I could say average quantity per uh, region. All right, gives me a visualization that shows me that. Let's look at the total um, sales per month, per order month, right? Shows me that, right? So you can get in there and begin to uh, question the dashboard and have it generate more information for you, which I think is really cool. 
All right, so again, we see our process here is we start with connecting to data, we transform and combine that data. This is the, the lion's share of the work you're gonna do. Uh, we can create our visualizations, which as you saw is pretty straightforward. You can spend some time formatting, but the process is very, very simple, I think. And then we can ultimately publish our data and begin to create dashboards inside of our web service. All right, guys. At this time, uh, let's open up the floor here for Q&A. Give you guys an opportunity uh, to ask uh, questions that you might have. I know that you guys have been entering some questions uh, in there. So, Mariella, I'll turn it over to you. And if, if there are some specific questions that you want to throw my way, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ed. Uh, before we get into any questions, I wanted to let our audience know that as a New Horizons exclusive benefit for attending this webinar, we have a free digital achievement badge for Microsoft's PL300 course. I went and dropped that link in the chat. Um, with that link, we also give you access to Microsoft's official courseware on PL300. So if you are unable to redeem that badge right now, or if you are watching a recording of this webinar, you can still gain access to this free badge with that link you'll receive in an email after the webinar. So go ahead and click that link, guys, if you want a free badge for Microsoft's PL300 course. Um, absolutely. And let's jump into some questions. I know the first one we had here was from Rich. How would you use this to track, I'm assuming um, the dashboard, how would you use the dashboard to track whether a goal was met or not using the dashboard? Um, inside of your report, there is a, there are different visualizations you can use for goal uh, tracking. Um, there is uh, specifically, and matter of fact, I can show you an example of that in one of these, bear with me for one quick moment, uh, there is specifically a, a gauge visualization that you can use. We take a look at this report, I believe I have one in here. Uh, da, 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 da. So here, you can see right here, there's a profit and sales gauge. And you can set a goal and see how close you've gotten to that. And then there are other visualizations and things you can choose to incorporate. And then it would just be as simple as adding that into your dashboard, which I'm pretty sure um, I actually have in the sales dash over here. Yeah, so there it is right there, right? So you can you know, just choose a visualization that accurately represents your goal and your progress, and then just include that in your dashboard. Awesome. Have another question here. Um, can you add the insights to the dashboard as text? Um, no, it, it, it doesn't show up there. Yeah, I'm assuming you're talking about the uh, the Q&A insights here. Um, it's, it's, a, it's more of an interactive thing. It's not something that permanently stays and becomes a part of your dashboard. Awesome, fantastic to know. Um, we had a question here from Jen. How often does the data refresh? Is it refreshed automatically? Uh, so it depends on the source of your data. Uh, because we were working with Excel, it didn't give us options there for um, choosing to have like a direct uh, refresh there. So basically every time we run our report, it is going to try to refresh the data. If I were to go into Power BI Desktop here again, we will see that there is a option here for the refreshing of our data, unless I'm thinking about, so yeah, right here. Uh, there's an option here for the refreshing of our data uh, where we could manually do that. If you are working with data coming from uh, a database like SQL Server or something like that, what you can do is as a part of the import process, you can change the uh, import type from an import to a direct query, which basically would mean that every time it's loaded up, it's going to automatically reconnect and you know query the data. All right, so the data source is going to matter when it comes to how quickly you want your data to refresh. That's great insight, absolutely. Um, just in advance, I want to try and get to a couple more questions, but I definitely wanted us to get out of here in a 30 minute sesh. So we have another really good question here. Do you recommend transforming data or data cleaning outside of Power BI? Does it take a lot of processing time to transfer data within Power BI? 
Uh, it does not take a lot of tra uh, uh, processing time. I mean, if you can clean certain things up, there are certain things you're not, you might not be able to clean up outside of Power BI, but uh, depending on where your data is coming from, if you can do some of the work before it gets to Power BI, then that's a, you know, you know that definitely would save you some time. Um, but I, I can't really think of a too much of a processing benefit unless you're like really, really like doing 30 different things to clean up the data, then I would say just rebuild your original data. Fantastic. All right, I'll have this one more question and then we'll get everyone out of here. Um, there were, there are two files within, with the same file name. How do I know which one is the correct one? Oh. Two files with the file, same file name where? I'm assuming maybe they were um, trying to import. Natalie, if you're still here, definitely throw in um, a little clarification on that one. I'm um, not sure if you were talking about in my workspace. Um, in the workspace itself, you'll see that because one is the, if you look at the type, one is the report, one is the model, so it will give it the same name, but they're different objects. In regards to data that you're importing, you can rename that data once you pull it in. So once you get it into the data model, it, it will automatically like number the different tables if they're the same name, or you could manually change the name of each one. Got you, got you. Okay, yeah, and I think she even clarified here. It goes with the, the next question. Um, what is the difference between a report and semantic model? Gotcha. So your model, that is the actual data model. Think of that as the relationship portion uh, or the data portion of Power BI, right? So what the raw data is and how it's related, how it was cleaned up. And then the report is the visualizations that were created based on that model. Excellent. Awesome. I'm so glad we got clarification. Thank you so much, Natalie. Um, all right. Well, we are a little over time. So without further ado, I'm just going to say thank you so much. Ed. This was a lot of fantastic info for our audience. So sorry we couldn't get to all the questions. Um, but if any of you need any more info on this topic, please do not be afraid to visit us at newhorizons.com. Um, and if you missed out on any part of this session, we will be sharing uh, a recording with you in an email after the webinar. So don't forget to redeem that badge if you have not already. Um, and if you have any more questions, please let us know. Thanks again, Ed. My pleasure. All righty. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.